What's up everybody? In this video, we're going to give my old Arctic Cat 300 some TLC. So this Arctic Cat is obviously the 300. It's a 2002 two-wheel drive with the engine, transmission, and rear end all in the rear. It's one of the most unique four-wheelers I've ever seen. Independent front and rear suspension. Five-speed transmission with a high and low range. Got your reverse here and all your normal standard stuff and floor breakdown there. Custom redneck fuse box. So here is under the seat. So with just a rough overview, seems like a pretty nice four-wheeler. And it is. So now I'm gonna give you some history behind this Arctic Cat, uh, hopefully without boring you guys too much. So starting out, uh, one of my dad's buddies, he bought this four-wheeler brand new. And by the way, this thing don't even have 100 hours on it, I don't think. Um, he bought it brand new. And he only used it maybe like once or twice a year. And every time he wanted to use it, it just kept acting up and carburetor issues and electrical issues and all this other bull crap. So he didn't sell it to my dad or me. He just gave it to us because he's got tired of messing with it. And it's been at my dad's for a little over a year now. And I mean, we've ridden it around, but it just never really seemed to run right. I mean, this thing just feels severely underpowered. Uh, like my, Honda, my brother's Honda Recon 250, I, I could rip that thing all around. Uh, in this video, we're gonna kinda dive into some of the strange issues and hopefully fix them. But being lame is not one of the only problems. The electrical system has given us a pretty rough time. We replaced the CDI box, we replaced the coil, we replaced the plug, and we looked at the plug before and it looked like it was running very lean. Uh, we did not replace the voltage regulator and we have been through about three batteries, probably two or three, something like that. Uh, this is a battery that is currently on it right now, had nothing in it, so I'm trying to charge it somewhat back up. You know, you never know with electrical crap. So we're just gonna put a new one in there and call it good. Oh, I think that catch came out of nowhere. Uh, but we put this thing on here so we can disconnect the battery. Uh, when we turned it off, so we tried taking off the buffler here because we thought that was one of the number one causes But yeah, it was super super loud. I have a video on that, but it didn't really increase that much performance So and since I'm in the neighborhood, I just decided to put the stupid thing back on there the pull start I do not know who in the world designed this pull start because you have to pull straight up on it and get your hands and knuckles broken and lacerated with this uh, dang metal piece right here. Every time you pull start it, you also gotta flip this compression release. And we did order a brand new carburetor for this thing. This is an aftermarket one, because I'm not gonna pay $300 for a new one, a brand name one. It had a little bit of oil leaks uh, in a few areas, so we fixed that. And I'm probably also gonna be changing the oil, because I don't know when the last time it was changed. So, yeah, let's get started. And the first thing we're going to do is, is give it a good scrubbing. As you saw, uh, with the choke on, when I was giving it throttle, it was still like bogged down like crazy. And I've been running it for a little while and it's still doing that. I couldn't even get more than third gear out of it because, you know, it just would like go crazy. And I tried taking the choke off. It'll idle with the choke off, but you know, it's just, it's like the load jets just stopped us. So we're gonna rip this carburetor out. All right, so carburetor is out. Now that's the main intake boot that goes onto the head to the carburetor and it doesn't look bad, but I bought a new one anyway. All right, y'all, I just took the bowl off of this carburetor and there is definitely some garbage in there. I really don't know how that all got in there. So there we go. The regular carburetor is torn down. Now I have my parts carburetor that is now torn completely down. So what I did was I took apart both these carburetors and I robbed all the best looking parts and put them all right here and put the worst of the parts 
right here. So that way we can make one good-ish carburetor out of the two. So yeah, let's get it reassembled. Boom, rebuilt car. Everything seemed to go back together pretty good. And I have confirmed that a Honda Rencon 650 carburetor will not fit. It's the same style of carburetor, uh, but obviously a 650 and a 300 are two completely different engine sizes. Uh, the throat is just overly massive and it's too tall and it just won't go in there. Uh, I'm thinking about if this carburetor don't work, getting a performance carburetor for like a Predator 301 or something like that. And where it slips right on, have to do a little bit of fabrication. Uh, but that'll be my last option if this fails. I did actually rebuild this carburetor, but um, some of the electrical components are missing and some of the stuff is just completely worn out. So we just, and it, this thing wasn't running properly, so we just bought a new one. All right, so I just took the air filter out, cleaned out the air box, and yeah, this look a little bit dirty, so I'm gonna blow it out and then put it all back together. And this thing just turned up tonight, which is the uh, intake seal and the hose for the air box. And this piece right here is also broken, so I'm gonna drill some holes here, zip tie. Boom. All right, let's see what we got. Gasket, intake, and secondary intake. All right, so now let's put some fresh gas in it. All right, so now we're gonna to try to start this thing. I'm gonna be pull starting it because I don't really wanna put the battery back in there with the voltage regulator acting all screwy. So we're gonna pull on it a couple times and hopefully it should start. Who designed this pull start? I'm done. So it's the next day. So what I'm gonna do now is remove this bottom skid plate to change the oil because the oil filter finally came in. All right, so got it off and this thing is absolutely disgusting because I mentioned before that used to be an oil leak but we fixed that and that's just all the collected bull crap. So I just got it jacked up, the wheels off of it. I'm gonna pop both drain plugs. I know that's a weird term to say but there's uh, one up here in the front and one back here uh, and that one has like a screen under it or something like that So I'm going to do both of that All right, so here's the oil I'm putting in it main reason is is because it does engine transmission and for a wet clutch as well So I just got done with this thing and it's about eight o'clock at night out here, but I don't care. I'm going out for a ride anyway.
did kind of okay, but I want to play with the carburetor a little bit. I did check the oil again, and the oil does look good. It's all topped off, but let's have a little look at this carburetor. Basically, when you get this engine throttle, there's a vacuum that goes to this section right here, and that's what pulls this up as the throttle increases. The needle also moves up, allowing more fuel. And if you have the needle in there deeper, it makes it leaner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little uh, rubber-ish bushing from like an erector set right here. And that's gonna raise the needle up slightly, basically richening the mixture. I also did the same thing to the CB750 carburetor. So the old carburetor I slapped back together has this drilled jet here to number 54. Uh, uh, trouble is, is that we drilled the jet, we put it back in there, and that thing just ran stupidly over rich. Like, it was just insane. It was blowing out black smoke, all kind of crap. But with this thing here, this thing has a stock, the stock jet in it. I never tried uh, this needle modification on this thing. This is with no choke. seem to do that much better and I saw some black smoke coming out of here so it's definitely more on the rich side oh yes the voltage regulator is finally here oh yes here we go so after screwing around for over 45 minutes trying to get this stupid bolt off I had to grind it with the angle grinder to get that rust welded thing off other bolt came out no problem so uh, finally out with the old and in with the new that's the whole thing, y'all. A two minute job is gonna be a two hour job. All right, so the voltage regulator is in there. The wire going to the stator, that plugs in perfect. The wire going to the ignition, the CDI, and the battery, the wiring is not gonna be a direct plug in. Boom. Everything's wired up, plugged in, and ready to drive. So you notice on this carburetor how it's spitting and sputtering and hesitating whenever I press the throttle. And then it like goes on and goes. I played around with the idle air fuel ratio screw because that's where mainly the pilot jet goes through and controls the close to quarter throttle. I played around with that and that was set way too rich. So I leaned it out. I've done a lot of testing off camera and I've pretty much got it right. Uh, it's not 100%, but as good as I'm going to really get it for right now unless I get a professional expert to come in and do it. But yeah, it doesn't do it nearly as much and you know for what it is for a free four-wheeler I'm pretty happy with it. So let's finally take it down the road and enjoy driving it We also did a drag race between this four-wheeler and this four-wheeler. This four-wheeler will top out about 60 miles an hour I only got the 40 miles an hour on this thing. I had this thing a fifth gear full throttle You know, it was it was slowly climbing RPMs, but that thing he just passed it And this thing just would not keep up with it
All right, so that'll conclude this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you got somewhat useful information out of what I did on this four-wheeler. And if you did, let me know in the comments. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, click all the other buttons on YouTube or say to click. If you didn't like this video, click a thumbs down twice because two is better than one. That doesn't count for likes.